Football Pro via Talent Show, while the world goes up in flames around you. Football in Afghanistan offers more suspense than every Hollywood flick. But until now, without happy end. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Futur, your football world trip around the globe here on YouTube. I'm your host Björn and together we will discover each and every of the 211 member associations of FIFA. We start with a country that most of us don't connect with football at the first glimpse, Afghanistan. The beauty of a country in Central Asia is mostly known for being shattered by decade-long conflicts, but you can be sure. The Afghans love the beautiful game as much as you and I do, and football is considered the second most popular sport in the country right after cricket. But before I keep on rambling, let's try to get a structure into this episode and let's start with a short look into the historic development of football in Afghanistan. Football was first introduced to the Afghans in the late 19th century. British teachers from the British Raj, nowadays India and Pakistan, brought the game to the Hindu Kush country and it was first played in high schools in Kabul. In 1922, the governing body of football in Afghanistan, the Afghanistan Football Federation, was founded. The year after, 1923, saw its first organized football tournament, which was played by four high school teams from Kabul. The first official football club of the country was founded in 1934, Mamudi FC of Kabul. And the first official game of the Afghan national team was played in 1941 against neighbor Iran. More and more clubs formed and the first official league in the country, the Kabul City League, was founded in 1946. In 1948, Afghanistan participated in its first intercontinental football tournament when they were invited to the Olympic Games in London. But it was just a short stint. They faced European powerhouse Luxembourg and lost 0-6 and had to go back home. Until this point, football in Afghanistan took a pretty average route in its development. But during the 1950s, economic troubles brought the organized game to a standstill. The national team celebrated its first victory in the history of the AFF, a meaningful victory against the neighbor to the south, Pakistan. But we have to be real here. Football was only secondary in that time for the average Afghan. Under Taliban rule, all sports were immediately prohibited. But that was just a short time span because the warlords and Taliban generals discovered that football can be a useful tool to bring their agenda to the people. Players had to wear long shirts and pants and even a hat if they wanted to play in an organized array. But for women, all sports stayed forbidden. The Taliban rule ended with the intervention of the Western Allies in 2001. And with the help of development programs organized by FIFA or states like Germany, Afghanistan reconstructed its football infrastructure. That brings us to the current time. Let's check out the domestic competitions. Since Afghanistan does not host a cup competition, we can straight go to the leagues. With financial backing of Afghanistan's biggest media company Mobi, telecommunications service provider Roshan, and the Danish sports manufacturer Hummel, the AFF was able to form a league that represents the country as a whole, the Afghan Premier League. Eight teams, each team representing a city or region, were newly founded. And here we can find a unique highlight exclusive to the APR. The roster of each of the eight new clubs wasn't automatically filled with the talents of the region. No, they had to participate in a talent show. The talent show with the name Maidan Izabs, on English Green Fields, hosted castings in each region of the newly formed APL clubs. A jury and the TV audience could vote who will make the cut. The talent shows prior to the start of the league were the best marketing tool to promote the new APL in the country. Even though each team represents another region or city, all games of the APL are played in the capital Kabul. The championship isn't a year-long competition like we know from other leagues. The whole tournament is played in a time span of around one month. The APL winner qualifies for the next season's AFC Cup, the Asian counterpart to the Europa League or newly founded Conference League. Let's have a look at the national team and the Football Federation of Afghanistan. The Lions of Khorasan are the pride of the Afghan people, even though they never qualified for a World Cup. The biggest achievement is the victory of the 2013 South Asian Championship. Just to clarify, the AFC, the Asian Football Confederation, is organized in five sub-confederations due to its big size and different level of play. Afghanistan was part of the South Asian Football Federation, in short SAFF, until the Central Asian Football Association was founded in 2015. So in the future, they will face more skillful opponents with teams like Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Asian powerhouse Iran, instead of India, Nepal and the Maldives. Most players representing Afghanistan come from abroad, especially from countries like Germany, the Netherlands or Australia. And there you can find a much better education for footballers. But even in that case, the APL had a positive impact on football in Afghanistan, since more and more players from the APL teams find their way into the national team. 
The highest achieved victory was the 8 to 1 against Bhutan. The highest defeat, a 0 to 11 against Turkmenistan. Until this point, Afghanistan has only played 8 of its 126 official matches at home soil, and that since 1941. Most home games are played in neighboring countries or in countries like Qatar due to safety concerns at home. And as if the disruptions from outside weren't enough, the biggest jeopardy for the Afghan football came from within the federation. Keramudin Karim. Members of the women's national team accused the former president of the AFF of sexual abuse. Making this public must have been the biggest ordeal for the ladies. Not just because they jeopardized their career. Kiramudin Karim is one of the most influential characters, not only inside the federation, more like within the whole country. He is a former governor of the Panjshir province and has a lot of ties to the Afghan elite. Even though he got convicted for the crimes, Karim vanished from the surface. The FIFA issued a bounty of 1 million Swiss francs that lead to his arrest. Another backlash of the sole incident was Hummel's announcement that they will immediately stop the partnership with the AFF. Hummel made a great job just shortly before with introducing not only a clean and well-designed jersey for Afghanistan, they even made a special jersey for the women's national team with an integrated hijab. After the retreat of Hummel, the German sportsman Jako jumped in to equip the national team. And who are the players for Afghanistan? We have to be honest here. Until now, no Afghan player reached worldwide popularity. The current best player of Afghan heritage must be Nadim Amiri, who plays for Leverkusen in the German Bundesliga. But he is not eligible to play for Afghanistan anymore, since he's already part of the German national team. Most capped national team player is Zoib Islam Amiri, who plays in India for Real Kashmir. The player who performs on the highest league level at the moment is Omran Haidari of Lechia Danz in Poland. Most players of the national team play in lower divisions in Europe, but you can see a rise of talents with Afghan heritage emerging in Australia. Ramad Akbari, a 20-year-old midfielder of Brisbane Roar, who had his breakthrough in this season, can be considered the biggest talent of Afghan heritage at the moment. But I guess it can be a similar case to Nadim Amiri of Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. Akbari already represented Australia on youth level. If the AFF wants him to be the distribution center of the Afghan midfield, they have one more year to convince Akbari to wear the Afghan jersey. Otherwise, he will be eligible for Australia. Let's have a look at the stadiums in Afghanistan. The biggest arena is located in Kabul and is called Ghazi Stadium. It is a national stadium and has a capacity of 25k. Just 200 meters to the northeast, we can find the AFF Stadium, a 5,000-seater that hosts the matches of the APL. Every major city in Afghanistan has its own stadium, but the quality mostly is very basic. Concrete terraces and maybe some seats on the main stand. That's all the comfort you get. And how about the fans? Fan culture, like we know it from Europe, is not established in Afghanistan. The APL matches are well visited, but most of the spectators go to the stadium for a general football experience. So what is my resume about football in Afghanistan? The development of football in Afghanistan is heavily tied to the political situation in the country. If you follow the news, you will see that the Taliban gain more and more traction in Afghanistan again. And even the safe haven Kabul is rocked by attacks almost daily. I personally wish all the best for the football in Afghanistan, because for the Afghan society, football is a glimpse of hope in an apocalyptic surrounding. My name is Björn, this is Futur, have a nice day.